Okay, so yeah, maybe to if that, I don't want to twist my neck, maybe I will see. Uh, it's okay. So um, I've, of course, I'm very honored to be uh, invited in this uh, in this week for Alexi, and also I'm very uh, uh, nervous about being the first speaker because uh, I wouldn't like to say too many uh, silly things. So uh, I start my talk by just some information about the, the connection with uh, Alexi before uh, Austin. So I hope uh, there, there is no too many mistakes. So Alexi is, uh, is a former student of ENS uh, in 92. And uh, I was a professor at that time there. And therefore, uh, I remember that at the early stage, I gave him a kind of undergraduate um, uh, memoir assignment, which was to read this uh, very nice little book by uh, Frank Morgan on the GMT. And I guess the next summer, there was a summer school uh, on geometric measure theory and GMT and uh, image processing that uh, Alexis attended. And probably this plays a role in, the, in his <laughs> mathematics. And later on, uh, we started the PhD together. So the first assignment was total nonsense. So, uh, and uh, it took to me 10 years to understand that actually it was an interesting problem, but it was too late <laughs> for LC. So therefore I had to find something else. And then I asked him a question which turned out to be interesting about the existence of shock, a discrete shock profile for the, the time discrete uh, kinetic uh, method for Euler equation in the case gamma equal to three, for which there is a nice kinetic formulation. And but I have absolutely no clue about the solution of the problem. So I was behaving like these uh, advisors of the 60s or the 50s where uh, they tell us, OK, you know, this guy, Riemann, uh, had a nice uh, conjecture. Maybe you could think about it. <laughs> so at a mo much more le modest level, I asked this question. And uh, it was quite uh, scary. But, by, but eventually, actually, uh, remarkably enough, uh, Alexi uh, solved this problem entirely uh, by himself and uh, on the way introduced uh, this uh, method of uh, blow up for the, the kinetic formulation of uh, conservation laws. I think he was really the first one to do it. And uh, out of that, uh, he had a series of papers, the best known paper being the one on the trace, trace theory uh, for conservation laws. So, Later on, uh, uh, with that, uh, the Alexis uh, completed a PhD, and one of the referees here, the Nisser. <laughs> so, uh, uh, and then uh, right away, he got actually, I think, and without uh, delay, the permanent position at CNRS. And he was allocated uh, to the University of Nice. I think there was some fight between Lyon and Nice. You can ask Denis about that. And then, uh, so he became a junior CNRSP person at Nice, exactly as uh, Alessio really did uh, several years later. And uh, it turned out that I, myself, I went to Nice one year later uh, as a senior uh, CNRS uh, guy. Uh, and... Uh, well, this was a very nice time, actually. And uh, at some point, I said, well, Alexi, you, are, you, you have been entirely in the French system, so you do your system, you go to your CNS position immediately. Maybe it would be good to stay a little bit out in the foreign country, in particular in the USA, for one or two years that I did in the past. And this is the reason why, actually, Alexi went to Austin. <laughs> and of course, the combination of uh, Luis Caparelli, uh, Irene Gamba for kinetic equation and semiconductors, because this was an important issue for Alexi's wife. So Austin was a very, uh, very good idea. <laughs> and it was such a good idea that uh, he never left. <laughs> okay, so this is what I wanted to say for uh, this story uh, I know. So probably in, the, in this room, I am the person who have known Alexis for the longest time. So it's uh, 30 years. Okay, so uh, now, why is it in Germany? Because I think that uh, Alexis I had a parallel career uh, on the German TV <clears throat> Okay, as the character of uh, first Dr. Brenner 
And then Dr. Lessing in the famous uh, criminal uh, German TV series, uh, Einfall für Zwei, which is very known also in France, especially among the retired people. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, think, I think you look a little bit the same as uh, this actor, like which one? <laughs> Paul. <laughs> and so I don't know who is the mathematician on the left side. <laughs> If you have a guess, please tell me. <laughs> okay, so now let me start the talk, so try to be more serious. So the, the talk is related to a work I did five years ago, uh, where uh, I uh, tried to solve the initial, initial value problem for a system of conservation laws uh, by uh, convex minimization in space-time, which is a strange idea. I will uh, go back to that a little bit later. <laughs> Uh, for entropic system of conservation laws. And uh, more recently, uh, I tried to extend this idea to uh, the general relativity and to the Einstein equation in vacuum. And uh, it's uh, just an adaptation because apparently there is no concept of uh, convex entropy in the Einstein equation. And therefore, uh, what I did is much more modest, is just to recover uh, the, the smooth solution of Einstein equation in vacuum <coughs> as a critical point of a, not minimizer, critical point of a suitable functional. And uh, I think the main interest of the work is this functional is extremely close to the one of fluid mechanics. So in some sense, in this talk, uh, there is an attempt to make a, a very direct li link between the uh, fluid mechanics, in particular the work of uh, Euler, and uh, the work of Einstein, I think that there is a formulation for which the two equations are very similar. And so this is what I, and I think it's a new result, so I would like to discuss that. So, uh, <clears throat> okay. And so now let's, let me start by the, 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 the more recent result. And actually, actually the formulation which I use today is really not exactly the one I used in 22. Uh, I think it's even better because uh, it's cleaner. So the problem is the following. So you are uh, working on the tangent bundle of the, phase space, the, of the time space. So the time space is R4. And the notation for the time space is little x, uh, x0, x1, x2, x3, x0 being the time, x1, x2, x3 the position. And the xi is a typical tangent vector to that. So this is in R8 x and xi, and so we are looking for fields g and m, which are uh, valued uh, in the set of 4 by 4 real matrices, 4 by 4 real matrices, depending on x and xi, and now I'm looking for uh, critical points, not minimizer, critical points of the functional where you integrate the trace of uh, the product m c minus 1 m, or if you prefer c minus 1 m square, We are four by four matrices, so everything makes sense. So, of course, if C is degenerate, uh, this may be a problem, but uh, we don't care about that at the moment. And we integrate that over the tangent bundle, and we perform uh, compactly supported uh, perturbation to that. And then there is a constraint, and fortunately here the constraints are completely linear. So the first constraint is that the divergence <coughs> of C with respect to x is uh, balanced by the divergence of m with respect to xi. And also that c uh, admits a vector potential a. So c is a derivative of some vector potential a minus, there is a correction on the diagonal, minus the identity matrix in R4 multiplied by the divergence of a for some vector potential a. And of course, uh, You can write that also as a constraint on C if you prefer. So if you are not completely satisfied by compact notation, in the bottom you can read the formula, the precise formula with uh, coordinates. So for instance, uh, Cjk is the x, uh, xk derivative, xik derivative of a, i, blah, 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 blah. And uh, I think this is precise enough now. Okay, so now the result, uh, which was obtained uh, published two years ago, uh, no, I mean one year ago, sorry, 
but uh, it was done two years ago. So the, if you take uh, a smooth solution of the Einstein equation, so by smooth solution, I mean uh, a Lorentzian metric G. So it's a field of four by four matrices with sig signature minus one, plus one, plus one, plus one. And they solve the Einstein equation in vacuum, which is just, which just mean that the rich curvature of G is zero in, the, in that case. And uh, I have to introduce the Christopher symbol, so you, it doesn't matter to give a precise definition here. So this is just denoted by capital gamma, and you can view uh, gamma just as a kind of logarithmic derivative of the metric with respect to the space-time variable. And now you introduce the potential vector by this closed formula involving the, the metric itself through the quadratic form attached to the metric. Uh, G, K, Q, Psi, K, Psi, Q. And uh, you take the cosine because for some, uh, from some re uh, reason related to the Minkowski uh, uh, metric, uh, you don't want to have a real exponential, so you use an imaginary exponential, that is to say the cosine. And the V is, is just the Christopher symbol applied to some tangent vector. And therefore, you define you to C uh, as before, and M is CV plus VC. And then uh, with this, I claim that CM, as it is defined here, satisfies the variational principle I just uh, uh, talked about before. Okay? So CM is a critical point. So maybe let me flash back. Uh, is a critical point of this problem. Okay? So it's uh, Pretty simple. And on top of that, it's important to notice that you can recover the metric, or rather the inverse of the metric, uh, just by integrating the potential vector with respect to, to xi at the moment of A. So it's a simple formula also. And the constant is not zero. You have to do the computation carefully to be sure that the constant is not zero. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the <laughs> trick in this business is to, uh, to use uh, systematically the, the tangent bundle to do the calculation. And for instance, uh, something that I think quite interesting to notice that the, the Riemann curvature can be expressed very easily uh, in terms of uh, this field capital V. So you can see uh, V either as a field of four by four matrices, but you can also see V as a collection of four vector fields uh, labeled by k, ranging from 0 to 3, and with coordinates uh, vj. And therefore, uh, you see that uh, in, with this vocabulary, the Riemann curvature is just like a commutator with uh, kind of a lead derivative of uh, vj by vk minus uh, the derivative of vk by uh, vj. So, uh, at least for me, it's very simple to memorize this formula, so I can write the Riemann curvature this way very easily. And uh, this is the first time. The second line is very good for people liking conservation laws because there is a symmetry in the Christopher symbols. So the Christopher symbol are symmetric with respect to the lowercase uh, indices, K and gamma. Uh, geometrically, it means that the, it's... Uh, uh, the geometry is torsion-free. There is no torsion. This is the meaning of the symmetry. And uh, torsion playing the role of more or less very close to vorticity in free mechanics. It's more or less a similar idea. And then uh, you can reorganize uh, this uh, nonlinear formula into a uh, conservation law, which is very reminiscent of the Burgers equation because uh, you have similar feature. So X uh, plays the role of the time for Burgers. And xi plays the role of this x for burgers, and you have some uh, funny square, and it's a little bit twisted, but looks a little bit like burgers. And uh, now we are interested in the Ricci curvature. So Ricci curvature is obtained by contracting the Riemann curvature with respect to n and j. So that's very easy to do, and you get this formula, which is not so easy to remember because the contraction has messed up the commutator structure. So I think it's easier to remember the Riemann curvature than the Ricci curvature. And uh, now, the idea that I used in this uh, recent paper was to, to deal with this 
type of generalized Burgers equation, matrix valued Burgers equation, a little bit like the, the regular Burgers equation, which was uh, treated in my previous work that I'm going to describe now. Okay, so maybe is there any, is maybe a good point to ask a question if something is confusing in the notation? Or something so clear. <laughs> I have, small, I have a small comment, which is that your name tag is rubbing the microphone. If you could do this. Ah, sorry. Uh, yeah, you're right. So it's must be terrible. So I um, said, there is a topological problem to solve. Because I don't have my glass. Oh, yeah. But I uh, managed to reach with the glass. So, okay, it's much better now. Yeah, maybe you should. Uh, okay. Okay, so le, let me go to this uh, second part. So, uh, for the people who don't know, just to, it's just a matter of uh, fixing the notation. So, system of conservation laws, uh, U is vector valued, valued in some uh, domain W in Rm. And uh, F is uh, non-linearity given to you. And I say that the system is entropic if there is a strictly convex function entropy, E defined on W, and a, uh, a flux function, entropy flux function uh, Z, such that every smooth solution of the conservation law satisfies the extra conservation law DTE plus diagram Z. And this is an exceptional property except in the one, uh, in the case where n is equal to one. So usually this doesn't happen and uh, uh, only very special systems enjoy this property, but it turns out that most of them are uh, the most interesting system by, from the physical viewpoint. So it's a very important concept. And now the, the minimization approach to solve the initial value problem, IVP stands for initial value problem, uh, is the following. So you start with an initial condition U0, which is given on the, on the periodic box. I don't want to discuss the boundary condition. And you try to minimize the, the integral in time of the entropy among all weak solutions. So uh, the notation are the following. So I do um, integration with respect to Lebesgue measure. So I don't write dtdx, uh, and uh, I integrate over the domain D, which is just the periodic box, and then integrate in time, the entropy, and I want to minimize that, where well, U is supposed to be a weak solution of the initial value problem, starting from U0. So I can write that by using test function, capital A, which are vector valued, and uh, they should vanish at the final time, very important. Uh, and of course, they shouldn't vanish at the initial time, and uh, you can input the, the initial condition this way. So I think it's more practical. Usually people put that as a, uh, an integral uh, at time zero, but you can also write that this way. It's, U zero depends only on X, of course. And uh, that's a problem. Okay. And uh, of course, if you would try to solve this problem in the class of smooth solution, this would be ridiculous because if you have a smooth solution, the entropy is the integral of the entropy is preserved. There is conservation law for it. So the integral of E of U is the integral of E U zero. And therefore, the quantity to minimize is T times the integral of E U zero. So there is nothing to minimize. Okay. However, uh, uh, we know that weak solutions are terrible. And uh, there are, they may, might be uh, a lot of them. And uh, for many systems now, we know, thanks to the convex integration theory and following uh, yeah. Lelis and Sekaidi, that uh, we may find a lot of weak solutions for many uh, problems. And therefore, it's not uh, such a silly problem. And on top of that, the weak solutions are known not to preserve the entropy. There is no reason. It can go up and down, make a lot of crazy things. So it's not completely absurd to look at this problem. So now uh, the, you can express the problem uh, following the Lagrange trick uh, just by writing uh, saddle point problem. So minimizing in U and maximizing in A. A is a test function that you can also see as the Lagrange multiplier if you prefer. Uh, and the uh, only constraint to care is uh, that uh, capital A should vanish at the final time. 
Okay. So, uh, yeah, so just a repetition of what I just said. And uh, of course, as we know, the in soup is uh, always larger than the soup in. So this is the so-called weak duality statement. And therefore, it's very tempting to look at this uh, formal dual problem. But at the same time, it could be, it's very likely that there is a duality gap. So but, uh, let's forget that. So now if we reverse the infimum and the supremum, you start by the minimization in U before maximizing in A. And the minimization in U is extremely simple because there is no derivative of U involved in this formula. So you can do uh, point by point uh, maximization, uh, minimization. Because the integral preserves the order, and therefore it's enough to do the minimization point by point. Mm -hmm. And therefore we end up with a very simple formula <clears throat> where you have a supremum of this following quantity, where uh, G is the result of this uh, pointwise minimization over the, the. You remember W is the domain in which the solution is supposed to be valued. So this is automatically a uh, concave problem because uh, the infimum, uh, we take the infimum of a fine function of the test function, which makes sense because the weak formulation provides a, a linear function of, of A. And therefore, since we are minimizing in U, we get a concave functional of A. I, this functional it might be very degenerate, actually. Because in particular, uh, formally, this is true even if uh, there is no entropy. Because the, without entropy, it's still, uh, it's still uh, a fine, and you have the maximization. Uh, the, 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 yeah. And uh, actually, in the Einstein business, the theory is just to get rid of E. You don't care about that. But of course, this is so degenerate, so you have to forget about the minimization. So it's just a critical point. <coughs> Because in some sense, uh, you, you may be uh, convex by being the supremum of, uh, of uh, a fine function, but you could be very often plus infinity. So it's not so obvious to do that. And so the result obtained uh, in this paper in 2018 is, first of all, uh, if you is a smooth solution to the initial value problem and capital T is not too large, uh, then you can recover the, the classical solution of the conservation law by uh, this uh, concave maximization trick. And uh, you have a, 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 a complete connection between the solution of the two problems because the optimal A can be written in terms of the, uh, the solution U through the derivative of the entropy function. And uh, since the entropy function is a convex function, you, have a, you can write that in a dual way. You can say that U is equal to E star of prime, where E star is a legend Frankel transform of E, uh, evaluated at A divided by uh, T minus capital T. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's a, yeah, in some sense, it's related to the entropy variable. Yes. Very good. And uh, the second theorem, uh, which makes the theory a little bit sharper, however, it is just for a stupid uh, baby problem, which is the Burgers equation. So in the case of the Burgers equation, uh, it turns out that all entropy solution in the sense of Khrushchev can be recovered by this trick. So in some sense, the result is not sharp for, uh, for general systems of conservation law. You have the smallness condition is written uh, down there. And it turns out that if you look at the smallness condition, in the case of the Burgers equation, you see that it, it sharply corresponds to the, to the apparition of a shock. And therefore, then, therefore, I decided to work the problem uh, more deeply. And for Burgers, it turns out that uh, you can recover the Khrushchev entropy solution uh, at, for any value of capital T. But this is the... So, but be, okay, I will explain Burgers in a moment. But before the, that, I would like to show you just an example of the case where you can compute the, the optimization problem because just, just for fun, because I like the formula. Okay, I don't know if it's useful or not. So if you deal with the isothermal Euler equation, when the pressure, when gamma is equal to one, when the pressure is proportional to the density, then you get this uh, closed formula with some funny exponential 
and you 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 see something that looks like what I discussed for general relativity. It's m c minus one m, with something similar. And now the, we uh, do the minimization over all uh, fields, scalar field U and capital M. M is a field of uh, uh, is a vector field, and C is a field of symmetric non-negative matrices. And they are linked by this uh, following uh, formula. So C derived for a kind of potential potential A. And the uh, little a and capital A are just solution to the linear acoustic equation with uh, little u and capital M as right hand side and the final condition at time t is zero. <laughs> so what I like in this result also that I mean if you if you start from Euler and you have never heard about the acoustic equation. So of course you can get acoustic equation by linearization. But in this formulation, you get the acoustic equation without any linearization. So even so, the the acoustic equation are, are directly in the Euler equation. No approximation in the hidden way, of course. Now, uh, if you work out the simplest Burgers equation, uh, it's it's the result is much simpler. So we start with dTU plus dx u square over two uh, is zero. So I am wondering, is is this clock working? I think so. No. No, we have all this happening now. Twice a day. Okay, so what time is it now? 9.41. 9.41, yeah. But actually, I think it's stuck. Yeah, so you can say, oh, I have plenty of time. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so you should fix that. Okay, so the... Um, it's very confusing, actually. The, uh, it's working. No, no, I, the needle of seconds is, is a problem. But it's the only, only one which is... Oh, ah, only, okay. Which is okay, so it's like Deutsche Bahn. It's almost perfect. <laughs> okay, so the so we do the the, the minimization now. We end up with the following formula where you have m squared divided by rho plus some uh, extra term involving the initial condition, and the constraint is dt rho plus dxm. So you recognize the fluid mechanics uh, setting where rho would be the density of a fluid, m the momentum. So M, you can write it as rho times v, the velocity, and you recognize the continuity equation, dt rho plus dx rho v, and the kinetic energy v square times uh, rho. And the final condition for rho must be one, uniform density. So in some sense, there is a reformulation this way of the Burgers equation uh, directly in some kind of free mechanics term, which is not totally obvious because uh, you could... Uh, know the Burgers equation like this without knowing anything about fluid mechanics. But thanks to this process, I can recover the concept of density, of momentum, continuity equation, kinetic energy, or free. So I think it's also interesting. And so the precise result about Burgers is that for arbitrary large capital T, by doing this uh, convex minimization problem, we recover the right entropy solution starting from U0, but only at the final time. So in some sense, it's a rather expensive strategy to compute the solution because it means that if you want the solution at time capital T, uh, you have to um, solve a space-time minimization problem, but you don't necessarily recover the solution before. So I will explain that with some, uh, some uh, picture now. So uh, here is a picture of a typical solution of Burgers equation on the one-dimensional uh, periodic box. And uh, you can see the, um, the, tragic, the, the characteristic of the solution, or if you prefer the level set of the solution U, and you see that there is uh, this characteristic Smith, which means that there is a shock. And actually on this picture, you can see that there are two shocks and the vertical axis, of course, is the time, and the, the horizontal axis is the space. So now, what happens if we take our final time to be before the first shock? So we apply the minimization principle, and thanks to, to theorem one, we fully recover the solution. No problem. However, now if I take a final time t, which is beyond the first shock, I get something else. I get following picture. 
So in this picture, you see that there is an empty zone. So uh, actually, everything else is correct. Everything else is the correct entropy solution. And at the final time, you get the entire correct Kushkov solution. However, the history is wrong because what happens is the, the minimization process actually uh, just gets rid of the initial condition you were given and find another one, which lead to a smoother solution for which the shocks appear only at the final time. So in some sense, there is no dissipation of entropy whatsoever before the final time. So in some sense, this is a, a funny uh, principle. So you have an initial condition and you decide not to respect it. However, since the Khrushchev semi-group is not one-to-one, -one, you may have the same entropy solution may come from many, many different initial conditions. And uh, in some sense, you choose the initial condition that uh, creates shocks only at the final time. And uh, which is not totally surprising because since we are performing a space-time minimization problem with a convex functional, uh, in principle, if we had a very strictly convex problem, the, the PDU should be elliptic, an elliptic PD space-time. So this is not compatible with hypervelocity. So in some sense, we play around with the fact that the convexity is degenerate. And so there is a little bit of room to get back to the right problem. However, the, the, the effect is that in some sense, you have a modifying a kind of modifying effect that we uh, substitute for the right initial condition. Another one, a substitute that makes the final solution correct. So it's a weird way of solving initial value problem. Okay, and then now if you take a larger time, capital T, after the formation of the second shock wave, so you see that uh, this uh, er erasing uh, um, strategy is now impacting two zones. Now you have two white zones without uh, where everything has been forgotten. <clears throat> so in some sense, I, uh, I'm sorry for the people who listened to this talk last week in L'Aquila because I'm repeating the same joke, but you can say that it's like in management, just the result matter, the final result. So everything before doesn't matter. <clears throat> so you erase the past. Okay, and now if you have a larger time, capital T, then you see that this uh, zone uh, where the information is lost is uh, growing. Okay, so I think, and of, of course, it would be very interesting to try to see whether this result can be extended to some other conservation law. But, <clears throat> okay, I was very lazy, so I did not even try the P system. And thing like that, because I would be, I'm too uh, sad about the idea that it wouldn't work. So actually, I'm very satisfied by, by, by burgers, because I know that it works. <laughs> okay, so now let me back, go back in the, uh, uh, now, uh, oh yeah, maybe actually it's true, it's true, it works. Yeah. It's only the, the, the needle, yeah, it's working. It's working. Very good. <laughs> so now, uh, if you go back to Einstein, the beginning of the talk, you see that these two problems have a lot of uh, similar features. So the so this was I, the, the first part is what I discussed at the beginning of the talk, and the second part is what I just described about burgers. And so in blue you see the main differences between the two problems. First difference in the ancient business, I just talk about critical points, not minimizer. Second thing, the you see that in burgers there is a detailed information on boundary condition. So you have the term involving the initial boundary condition. And there is the final boundary condition for the density. And of course, in the ancient business, I have no idea about inputting any kind of uh, boundary condition. So I don't know what to do. Uh, otherwise, it's very similar because the continuity equation is uh, the same. And uh, there is another feature which is unusual. It's the fact that the, C, the, the field C of matrices admits uh, a, a vector potential which is not true for burgers. However, for burgers, if you look a little bit more at the equation, it's quite natural to consider that rho is the divergence of some, uh, some vector fields, but the divergence is essentially any function can be a divergence. So it's not relevant to, do, to, to, to say that. And we saw in the case of the isothermal Euler that there was also a potential for, the, for this term C. Okay, otherwise, it's, it's quite similar. So now, uh, in the 
few minutes left, I guess. So the I would like to discuss uh, another work, which, which is just a small part of a, a joint work with Philippe Angelaras, which is in progress, not written enough, and this is just a part of it. So the to go back to the ancient equation, so uh, I have to be a little bit more precise about the Christopher symbol. So there is a, a link between the Christopher symbol and the derivative of G, which is written by this formula. And uh, actually, it's very uh, nice to encode that by introducing a potential phi defined on the tangent bundle and including the quadratic form associated to G and the log of the determinant of G. And V is defined as before, directly through the Christopher symbol. And then you get this uh, kind of a transport, generalized transport equation uh, that you can uh, write in a more compact notations, like the gradient, the flat, gradient, flat Euclidean gradient of uh, phi plus V dot grad psi phi plus divergence of V in psi is zero and uh, V is curve free. So uh, this is a very uh, reminiscent of free mechanics. Okay. So that's the first uh, equation you write. <clears throat> and now uh, I have the following proposition. Well, we have the following proposition. So the Einstein equation, and here I input the, uh, just to, to make for fun, more fun, the cosmological constant. So it's an uh, Einstein equation in vacuum with a cosmological constant, capital lambda. And uh, the claim is that the Einstein equation, they just describe very special solutions, which are uh, linear quadratic. So V is a linear solution in psi, and phi is a quadratic in psi of uh, this big system living in the tangent bundle, R8, which is co composed of two equations. So the first equation is the one I just wrote, linking uh, phi and V. And uh, the second equation is uh, what I also wrote uh, at the beginning of the talk, uh, because you can recognize that the, the, the left-hand side is just this uh, kind of uh, burgers, general burgers operator I wrote. So it's Ricci. This encode Ricci. And the right hand side, lambda grad psi phi encode the metric. So it's Ricci is lambda g, which is exactly Einstein equation in vacuum with cosmological constant lambda. Okay? And then you have also this curl free condition for v. That's v as a potential inside. So you see that the similarity with uh, Euler is, uh, in my opinion, extremely striking because if you remember the case of Euler equation <clears throat> in the isothermal potential case, so isothermal, the pressure is proportional to the density. So the speed of sound is constant. And I denote the speed of sound by C. So C is not the speed of light, it's just the speed of sound. And uh, in the isothermal case, this is just a constant. And uh, I use also the potential uh, formulation of Euler equation. So the equation is written in the Bernoulli form dTV plus gradient of V square over 2 is minus C square grad phi. And phi is the logarithm of the density. And we have uh, the first equation is a translation of the continuity equation when you input. Uh, phi as the, I think it's written here, yeah. And so, uh, if you can read it, the dictionary between the Euler and Einstein is the, instead of time space in the Euler business, we have the tangent bundle of the space time, xi for Einstein. Instead of dt, we have the gradient with respect to the space time variable. Instead of the gradient, we have the, the gradient with respect to the tangent variable psi, V is uh, matrix valued, phi is still real, and the cosmological constant plays the role of minus C squared in the ancient equation. And uh, I told you that uh, the, the ancient uh, setting is torsion-free, so in my opinion, this is uh, the same as a potential condition for Euler. So in some sense, I think there is... I mean, it's for, there, are, there are some extensions of ancient equation with torsion. I'm sure this exists. But in some sense, if you view that from the you from the mechanical viewpoint, it's perfectly reasonable. But to introduce torsion. Okay. And then, so as uh, Laplace said, lisez Euler, 
euh, il est notre maître à tous. On dit ça long time ago. I think it's still correct. Nice. Um, I mean, because we have, uh, at least in this room, some guy who likes very much times. <laughs> So the and now uh, 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 funny comment also. If you look at the potential isothermal Euler equation, uh, this also admits special uh, linear solution, linear quadratic solution. So uh, if you, it turns out, I think some people call that zonal flows. So you, you look at the velocity field V, which is a linear in X, uh, given by a potential. So it's given by a matrix, a symmetric matrix W, depending on T. If you have a, a vector field which is potential and linear, you can write it this way. With WT is a symmetric d by d matrix, and the phi, which is the logarithm of the density, is supposed to be quadratic. So you have a constant depending on time and a quadratic form depending on the symmetric matrix z of t. And then you can write it's very easy to write down the, the system of equation which is just a system of OD for these two matrices. <clears throat> and the lambda doesn't play any role. And uh, you, you, you see that in, the, in, this, in this vision, so if the, the Einstein equation plays the role of this ODE for isothermal Euler. So in some sense, the, the claim that the, there is maybe a lot of interesting features in this uh, lifted system. Since uh, in the Euler business, the equation is non-trivial, but however, if you, if, you, if you limit yourself to special solutions that are linear quadratic, you get just a nice looking uh, ODE, but not, more, not much more than that. So I don't know if this point is uh, clear. And so the, the final comment is, uh, of course, this PDE is very uh, weird. So I don't know really how to do it. Uh, so any comment are welcome. So because it's a, in some sense, it's a, not anymore an evolution equation because the time is now multidimensional. <coughs> However, you can look at the linearized version about zero. And you see that the linear version is very degenerate. So there is a, the range is very small. And the kernel is very big, so not, not very good. However, Okay, if I'm not mistaken, if you perform the Fourier uh, calculation, you see that the worst you can you have is to divide by this symbol, uh, where x hat and psi hat are the Fourier transform of the of the variable, and that's not so bad because it's uh, it's non-negative. So in some sense, this symbol is almost elliptic, it's borderline elliptic. So maybe there is a room to <laughs> we will do a further study of this system. Okay, so if okay, so uh, maybe also in the literature on the linear uh, PDs, there are some things. Some people told me that there are some maybe some interesting results already existing on this kind of system, but I don't know much about that. And so now, <clears throat> so uh, I think uh, we are almost. Uh, so you, you remember that Leipzig is very famous, not in France, <laughs> for a crucial bat battle in history where Napoleon was defeated by the United Nations. And this was celebrating these uh, nice pictures where you can see the, the emperor of Russia, the emperor of Austria, the king of Prussia, and the general Schwarzenberg announcing the victory to this. Uh, to this united people against Napoleon. Okay, thank you very much.